Hello everyone. The title of this video is Determining End Behavior. So each example I'm going to be doing in this video is taken directly from a free online textbook at openstacks.org. I'm in their Algebra and Trigonometry text, section 5.3 called Graphs of Polynomial Functions. And I'm under the heading Determining End Behavior. Uh, in each example I'm going to do is either going to be an example from the reading or one of the try it problems from the reading or one of the exercises at the end of the text, at the end of the section that's related to this particular objective. Now I'm going to be determining the end behavior for a polynomial function Right, the title is Graphs of Polynomial Functions. And you can see here the general form of a polynomial function written in descending order. And the key, and I've mentioned this in previous videos from this chapter, chapter 5, before, uh, when you're determining the end of behavior, you know, what happens as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, right, the right end and left end behavior of the function, you really in, no, only need to focus on that leading term, right, the term with the highest power. And then you're looking for the following. Now again, I'm not going to write this out, I'll just show you what they're showing in, in the text here. So if the polynomials of even degree and, you know, you have a positive leading coefficient, the graph will go up on both ends. Right, the, uh, the, the, the value of the function will go to infinity on both ends. Now if you have an even degree and a negative leading coefficient, flip that. Right? The, the function will go down on both ends. The, you could say the value of the function approaches negative infinity on both ends. And then at the right side of this table, if a function has odd degree, right, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on, and a positive lead coefficient, then the graph will go down to the left and up to the right. So the, f the value of the function will approach negative infinity on the left end and positive infinity on the right end. And if the lead coefficient is negative, you just flip that. If it's an odd degree polynomial with a negative lead coefficient, the value of the function will go to positive infinity on the left end and negative infinity on the right end. And that's all you need to know. Now, I think the purpose of this video is to show you like, well, what if, uh, you know, what if the polynomial is not written out this way in nice, you know, general form descending order like this? How do I find the leading term? And again, I have mentioned this in previous videos. You just, you know, if it's in factored form, like we're going to see in the three, I just have three quick examples for you here today. If the polynomials in a factored form or some form other than this, finding the lead term shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, you can just multiply the lead terms of each factor. And I will, I'll show you. So my first example, again we're just asked to determine the end behavior and that is all of these polynomial functions. So the first one we have f of x equals, you know, x plus 3 to the second power times x minus 2, you know, to the first power. Now, to find the leading term, to be able to determine pardon me, the end behavior, you can do one of two things. One is you could multiply the whole thing out multiply the entire thing out. Um, you know, x plus 3 squared is x squared plus 6x plus 9 
and then you multiply that by x minus 2 and hopefully you remember how to multiply polynomials, right? I'm just going to take each term from one and distribute to the other. So say I distribute the x over here, we got, we'd have x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x and then I distribute the negative 2 to these three terms, we'd have negative 2x squared minus 12x and then a minus 18 and then combining like terms we're seeing f of x equals you know x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x uh, then minus 18 and now we've found you know the leading term Right, the leading term, the highest powered term, is this, you know, one x cubed. One x cubed. Now, a much easier way to, because you know, again, all we're doing is finding the end behavior, just describing the end behavior, so all we need to know is that leading term. So really, if you want to find just the leading term, just multiply the leading term from each factor of the polynomial. Just multiply the lead term from each factor. And again, I believe I've done this in previous videos on n behavior as well. So the lead term, the leading term, will be the following. You, know, you have x plus 3 as a factor. The lead term, the highest powered term in that factor is x. So we have x, but don't forget, this is x plus 3 twice. You know, it's x plus 3 squared, so I have x again from this x plus 3 squared. It's x times x. And then the other factor, x minus 2, also has a leading term of x. So our leading term for the entire polynomial is going to be x times x times x, which is x cubed. Which is exactly what we saw earlier, you know, when you multiplied out the entire thing. Right, and obviously this is much faster. Now if you were asked to write the entire thing in general form, you know, you're going to have to multiply it out to get this x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x minus 18. I right? get the general form for a polynomial function in descending order. But if you're only finding the leading term, just multiply the lead term from each factor. It's really that simple. So if we look at this, you see it's a degree 3 polynomial, which is odd. And it's an odd number and the lead coefficient is 1, which is positive. Okay, so now that I have this stuff, we should be able to describe the end behavior with a picture and with some symbols, some arrow notation. So if I do a little picture here, you know, here's the xy axis, xy coordinate plane, it has odd degree and a positive lead coefficient. So the function, when you graph it, will be going down to the right and up on the, uh, sorry, down on the left end and up forever on the right end. Like, uh, like I showed you in that table in the OpenStax book. Now another way we would say this is that you know, as x approaches positive infinity, right, this would be to the right end, the value of the function, right, f of x, the output, is also going up forever, going to positive infinity along the y-axis. Right? So f of x approaches positive infinity as well. 
that's the right end behavior. And then as x approaches negative infinity, right, this is going to the left forever, the value of the function f of x is going down forever, which means, you know, if you look along the y-axis, the output, that's going to negative infinity as well. And there we go. I'll put that in a nice little box. This is what they asked us for. Describe the end behavior. And, you know, if you'd like to verify this with a graph, I'm going to go to that free online graphing calculator uh, at desmos.com, and I'm just going to enter the function they gave us. f of x equals x plus 3 squared times x minus 2, and look at the ends, right? If I zoom out a little more, scroll out, you can very clearly see as you go to the left forever, the, f the value of the function is going down. And as you go to the right forever, the value of the function is going up. You could also verify this with some tables. Right, if, I, if I click on the little cog here, we can make a table for this function. And let's see what happens you know, on the right end. If I plug in 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, uh, uh, 110,000, whatever. You see the larger x gets, right? The larger x gets. So going to the right, the larger f of x gets. So it's a 13, 1,000 here, a million here, a billion here, a quadrillion here, right? Huge numbers. So I'm seeing from this table, as x goes to infinity, f of x goes to infinity as well. They're both getting larger at the same time. Now if I just change all these to negative numbers, right, that's going to the left, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000, you know, negative 110,000. And you see how as I go to the left forever, plug in bigger and bigger negative numbers, see how the outputs are getting bigger and bigger negative? Right, technically smaller, right, because you know, more negative you are, the, the smaller you are on a number line. But, but you see, as x goes to negative infinity, f of x is also going to negative infinity, right? You can kind of verify this with a graph or a table. Good, so our end behavior was you know, seemingly correct here. All right, and that's all I have to, to do in these examples. All right, so the next ones are the same. And just got a few of these. Like I said, I've done in behavior videos before, or at least talked about it. So number two, got h of x equals you know x minus one cubed times x plus three squared. And all I care about finding is that leading term. Well, hopefully you can see it would be x times x times x, right? There are three of these. Times x times x, right? There are two of these. So this will be x to the fifth. 1x to the fifth. Because, you know, I would rather just find the lead term. I don't, I, multiplying this out in, in its entirety would take a while. And then the degree is easy to find now, right? The degree is 5. So another odd degree. And the lead coefficient is positive. Right? It's positive 1 again. So putting these together, right? Odd degree, positive lead coefficient. We can state you know, the end behavior. Once again, the graph will be going down to the left end and up on the right end, right? just like the first example. Again, I'm pulling these directly from the book, so you know, sorry that there are two in a row that are exactly the same. But so as x approaches infinity, 
now this time the output is called you know h of x the output h of x the value of the function is also approaching infinity right it's going up on the right end and as x approaches negative infinity right going to the left the the value of the function h of x is also going toward negative infinity and here we go right, that's that's what they're having us do describe the end behavior all right and once again now i won't put up a table this time i'll just show you the graph once again So I'll just enter the function back in Desmos here. The way they gave it to me, it was h of x equals x minus 1 cubed times x plus 3 squared. And if you look, right, see the, the graph is going down very sharply to the left end and going up very sharply on the right end. But still, the end behavior is the way I described it. And you could also verify with some tables, right? Plug in larger and larger values of x, and you'll see the value of h getting larger and larger, positive. And then plug in larger and larger negative values for x, and you'll see the value of h get bigger and bigger negative as well. Okay. All right, I have just one last example. Now, unfortunately, the examples from the book they're all odd degree. Just understand, you know, go back to that table. Understand that, you know, even degree polynomials have a little bit different in behavior. So here we have a function called m of x. Negative 2 times x times x minus 1 times x plus 3. So negative the lead term. Again, just multiply the lead terms of each factor. Now, negative 2 is its own factor, so negative 2 times x is its own factor, so just x. x minus 1 is a factor, the lead term is x. x plus 3 is a factor, the lead term is x. So the lead term, if you were to multiply all this out, would be negative 2 x cubed. All right, and go ahead and, you know, if you want to verify that for sure, double check it, multiply this out. It, w it wouldn't take nearly as long as it would for example 2 here with the degree 5. But we see from the lead term, this is a degree 3 polynomial. So once again, an odd degree, just understand that you will come across examples with even degrees, right? And I've done it in previous videos. And the lead coefficient is negative 2, right? A, a negative number. Alright, so putting these together, we can describe the end behavior. Now, an odd degree with a negative lead coefficient just flips the end behavior of the odd degree of the positive coefficient. So it's going to be going up on the left end and down on the right end. Right, and the way this would be described you know, as x, as the input gets larger positive, right, as x goes to infinity, so to the right end, the value of the function, which this time is called m of x, is going down, right, so it's going to negative infinity. And then for the left end behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, the value of this function, m of x, is going up, right? So approaching positive infinity. And here we have it. Right? There's what they wanted, the description of the end behavior. And then once again, I'll just type this into my Desmos calculator and we'll verify that that is truly the end behavior. So I'll just type it as is, m of x equals negative 2x times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 3. And just zooming out a bit, you can see on the left end, the value of the function is going to positive infinity. On the right end, the value of the function is going to negative infinity as we described. Also, make a table if you wish. 
if you plug in bigger, bigger positive values of x, the values of y will be negative, the values of m will be bigger and bigger negative. And if you plug in big negative values for x, you're going to get big positive values for the output, or at least you should. Okay, and uh, that that is all I have for you. As I said, though, you know, please understand that you know, yeah, there were all all three of these examples ended up being odd degree polynomials. You may come across even degree polynomials. Just you know, go back to that little table, see what the end behavior would be like. Should be pretty easy to remember that stuff, in my opinion. All right. I'm hoping that watching me go through these few examples here you know, helps you out in some way when you're asked to identify and describe the end behavior of a polynomial function yourself. And thank you very much for watching.